So I see a lot of reviewers on YouTube talking about input lag in very unprecise terms and it disappoints me a little bit. Although I see where they're coming from, testing input lag is quite difficult to do objectively. Uh, there's a couple methods I know. You can use 240p test suite. There's an automatic lag testing mode on there so that you can test um, display lag. But what if you want to test the lag on, uh, say, Final Burn Neo emulator like I have running on these two CRTs to the right of me? Or say you want to test the input lag on a, um, uh, a mini console like the uh, TurboGrafx-16 Mini. Even if you're hooked up to a CRT, those you know emulations going to have input lag. And uh, how much lag you have can affect whether you want to play a game, how you're going to play a game. You know, it can affect whether you want to buy the, uh, the mini console or not. And I just see reviewers kind of, I don't want to say lazy, but they're just not very precise. They'll say things like, oh, it has some lag or a little bit of lag. And I just don't think that's very helpful. And I have taught myself how to tell the difference between one frame of lag, two and three frames of lag, four to five frames of lag and six and plus frames and I wanted to show you guys how I did that myself and how you can do it so that you can train yourself how to be sensitive to lag. It's not very hard and uh, hopefully um, reviewers could use this method. Maybe if a lot of people watch this video and this technique picks up some kind of a push behind it, maybe we could get reviewers to be a little more precise and say things like, oh, the um, TurboGrafx-16 Mini has between three and six frames of lag. This game has four frames of lag. I think that would be helpful. Okay, we're getting down to business here. So this is Street Fighter 2 Turbo on the Super Nintendo original hardware to a CRT. And this has one frame of lag. Um, I'll demonstrate to you how I know it has one frame of lag later, but just take my word for it right now for simplicity. Um, this is the the baseline of lag. It doesn't get any lower than this. Um, all games I have found from that, I believe it's the fourth generation, Super Nintendo, Genesis, and then also the Nintendo, they all have about, not about, they all have one frame of lag. Some games, like um, hacks and um, like uh, unlicensed games that are, you know, not very well made will have more frames of lag, but it's kind of hard to find a game with more than one frame. No games have zero lag. I've never found a game with zero lag in any console, arcade, um, Nintendo, freaking PlayStation, whatever. In fact, the later generations like Saturn and uh, PlayStation 2, Xbox, those will have commonly more lag. But anyways, um, so this is how you feel what one frame of lag. You load a game like this that has one frame and you press the down button and directional buttons. Directional buttons typically have less lag um, and just feel what it feels like. It feels, one frame of lag feels instantaneous. It feels like the sprite is one with your body. As soon as you press the button, you can hear me pressing it here. I mean, let's see, it's a draw game, so I'll load it up again. As soon as you press the button, the sprite moves. As you're, as you're pressing the button, the sprite moves. I love how one frame of lag feels. You feel one with the controller, with the game. Um, so that's what one frame feels like. And you just train yourself to do that. And then we'll load games with more lag and we'll see what that feels like. And, and you'll, know that you'll notice the difference. All right, here's another game that has three frames of lag. It's called X-Men vs. Street Fighter. Um, it's hard to find games, like I said, with three frames of lag. Um, this is a unlicensed game I got in my Super EverDrive pack from Smoke Monster. You can find it in there under unlicensed if you want to use it to train yourself. And this, this one I chose because it has consistently three frames of lag. When you press the down button, it's consistently three frames. I have other unlicensed games that have like between two and five frames. It's just so inconsistent. It's really not good to train yourself with it. But this one consistently has three frames of lag when you press the down button. Um, Sometimes, you know, other button presses might have more lag. 
I believe his punch has like four to five frames of lag. So that, um, we'll use this for three frames. Get to know what this feels like. Just pressing down. And what this feels like, it feels like after you press the button, the sprite moves. So I press the button and immediately after he moves. There's no hesitation after pressing the button and it's not as you press the button. As you press the button and the sprite moves is one frame. You press the button and then the sprite moves is what two to three frames of lag feels like. All right, this is Mortal Kombat 1 on the Super Nintendo and I'm showing this one because it has a whole bunch of lag. This is kind of just a bonus I wanted to show you guys. So I was saying earlier it's hard to find games on Super Nintendo and Nintendo Genesis that have more than one frame of lag. I don't know why this game, it's like a major title, it has the worst lag. I'll show you later how much it has, but this game has between 7 and 12 frames of lag baked into it. It's just ridiculous. It's the only game I know like this. It's a major release. I have, like I said, if you look up like um, hack games and homebrews and unlicensed games, you'll find stuff with like variable, variable lag between three and five frames. This is just insane. It's, it's so laggy and it, it's worth trying just to feel what a whole bunch of lag feels like. And it's variable too. And it just drops movement sometimes. Like I'm pressing down over and over again. Sometimes it's like he just won't go down. But yeah, it feels super laggy, guys. Like, like I wouldn't use this to train yourself what like a certain number of frames feels like because it's variable lag. But just to know what like something laggy feels like, like you can try it out. And I like using these um, two-player fighting games to train myself what lag feels like because... You can just, you know, you can put two players up. It's easy to tell when the sprite's moving. And you can have it in two-player mode and with the other guy not doing anything. So you have, you know, freedom to just try out the movements without, you know, being attacked and stuff going on on the screen. No distractions. Um, you know, I don't really have a game with... Um, four to five frames of lag that's consistent. Like I have uh, some games that have variable lag between three and five frames, but I don't think you should use those. I'll show you how I've taught myself what four and five frames feels like, but we'll have to go over to an emulation setup. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about how I know that this game has a certain amount of lag. I'll show you how I test how much a game has lag in it. And one thing to note here is when you're on original hardware like we are right now, this is a Super Nintendo original hardware with a flash card. I'm running these ROMs off of a CRT wired controller. There is no lag that you're going to experience in this setup except for what's baked into the game. All these games have at least one frame of lag baked in. Some have more. So this is like the default. This is where you go and you know how much lag you're experiencing because the only lag you're getting is from the game and now I'll take you over to my emulation setup and show you how I find out how much input lag is in a game okay here we are over at my emulation setup it's to a CRT from my Windows 10 PC uh, CRT emu driver is putting out a 15 kilohertz signal um, I'm running RetroArch here and it doesn't matter what emulator you run in RetroArch here um, and this ROM we're running is the Super Nintendo ROM of Mortal Kombat. And I'll show you how you can see how much lag is baked into the game. So you're running the game in emulation and you hit P on your keyboard to pause emulation. So the emulation is paused now. And we'll hold a button press. Um, the rotational buttons, directional buttons um, have less lag than the firing and jumping action buttons for the most part. So we're gonna hold the down button and now we're gonna advance frames and count. So the first frame advance you count as zero because if the sprite had moved on that first frame advance there would be zero lag. So we'll count. And I'm holding the down button, I'm Kano. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 
12. Oh, 12 frames of lag baked in. This is just nuts. Every time I see this, it cracks me up. I cannot believe that a Super Nintendo game has 12 frames of lag baked in. Now, it's variable too. Like, we'll try it again. Let's try it again. Um, we'll pause emulation and holding the down button, let's see if we get 12 frames again. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, now it's nine. So it's not only is it a shitload of lag, it's variable lag. It's just the worst. Um, most games don't have variable lag baked in. Maybe your emulation might, like if you're your CPU is having a hard time chugging along, like there's a lot on the screen, you might have more lag. I'm not sure about that. But uh, most games don't have variable lag baked in, good games. This one does. This is just a, uh, just a horrendous port of the game, really. I mean, it looks good, but the lag is terrible. Um, what else to say right here? Um, so let's unpause it. Okay, so I'm talking about how you're pausing it. So I'm pausing emulation. So when I'm advancing frames now and you're counting the lag, this is not how much lag you're gonna feel while playing the game. This is just the amount of lag you get baked into the game. The emulation is paused. So, I mean, the whole reason I use RetroArch on a CRT is that you can do this latency reduction. You come in to run ahead here. I mean, this is another topic, but just real quick. Um, latency reduction on and we'll put it to the most I think you can do is six frames it doesn't even touch this one okay so now we have six frames advanced we are removing six frames of lag that is baked into the game and we'll pause it and I'm gonna hold the down button we're gonna do our test again zero one two three four five so now on the fifth frame he moves so he would have moved on the 11th frame that time, but we removed six frames of lag. We'll do it again. Zero, one, two, three. So now on the third frame he moved because we removed six frames of lag. But, okay, but you're, so now he moved on the third frame, but you're not going to feel three frames of lag while gaming. Like, it's, you're going to have input lag, or excuse me, you're going to have um, emulation lag added to that typically between two frames of lag three frames of lag if you have a uh, what would you call it? Uh, a v-sync on v-sync adds a frame so um, let's move on and I'll show you how I know those other games only have one frame two three or two to three frames of lag all right guys we're here with X-Men vs Street Fighter Super Nintendo ROM running on my emulation setup I'm gonna demonstrate it has I said earlier that it has three frames, but it's between two and three frames with nothing going on on the screen holding the down button. We're going to use the down button. Um, and I'll uh, hold down right now. Now we're, we'll, uh, we will advance frames. Zero, one, two. So he's moving on the second frame. We'll try it again. Zero, one, two. So second frame. I think if there's stuff going on on the screen, It'll be more like he'll move on the third frame. But uh, between t two and three frames feels feels the same. It's really hard. I've gotten to where I think I can tell between three and two frames. But when I started getting sensitive to lag, I divided it up into one frame of lag games, two and three frames of lag, four and five frames of lag, and then six and plus. So what do you got? You got like four categories right there. And now I've actually gotten to where I feel like I can sense a game that has five frames versus four or two versus three. But I think when you start out doing this, you should just try and notice those categories I gave you, you know, um, one frame and then the two and three frame games and the four and five frame games. Okay, I have Battle Garega up here on my emulation setup on RetroArch, the emulator's Final Burn Neo playing an arcade game Battle Garega to demonstrate what four frames of lag feels like. I can't find a console game to play on my original hardware that reliably has four frames of lag. I can find games between three and five, like really crummy games, but that's not going to help you what four frames of lag feels like. So to you to teach yourself what four and five frames of lag, you really need 
to have some understanding of emulation and how much lag games have. So I'm going to give you some tools to do that. And if you have a CRT, um, you know, you could use a VGA monitor. It'd be easier than my setup where I have standard definition TVs. But if you have a CRT and you have a means of getting your emulation to that CRT, uh, you're going to you're going to have no display lag. And then uh, you have a wire controller, no display lag. So all the lag here is from my the ROM, whatever lag is baked into the game, and then also whatever lag my emulator is putting out. And this emulator will give you three and four frames of lag. Three frames of lag if you have VSync turned off. And if you have VSync turned on, VSync adds one frame of lag everywhere on any game, so far as I know. Um, VSync is one frame of lag. So I have VSync turned on um, for rising games. I typically always have VSync turned on because I can't stand the screen tearing. Um, so right now this game has four frames of lag on it because I've removed all of the lag like I was showing you. You know, I did a lag test for this game and this game has four frames of lag. So I go into, um, where do we go? Settings here, latency and run ahead run aheads turned on and I have it set to four frames there so we're removing the four frames that this game has baked into it which is atrocious four frames on a game I guess it's not terrible if you were to play this on an actual PCB but to play this game I mean I have to play this game with four frames of lag because the emulator adds three and VSync as another frame. So I'm playing with the exact same latency as you would get on a PCB because this PCB is terrible. It just four frames of lag is a lot. So if you were to try and play this without run ahead with eight frames of lag, good God. But you move around here, we'll, we'll just turn the, we'll unpause it and you can move it. And what four frames feels like, it feels like you press the button and there's a moment of hesitation. There's a moment of hesitation and then the sprite moves. Like um, one frame, it feels like it's one with your body. Um, two to three frames, it uh, feels like after you press the button, immediately after the sprite moves. Um, four frames feels like you press the button and there's a moment of hesitation. Uh, two to three frames, the analogy I use is like flipping a light switch. As you're flipping the switch, the light doesn't come on. So there's that moment of action where you're pressing the switch, just like you're pressing the controller and then the light comes on or and then the sprite moves it's like and then it's right after um yeah i guess that's about it for showing you you know that how to sense input lag and, and showing you how to get sensitive to it and giving you some examples of you know you can you can do this too you, if you have an emulator like we all have access to now you um you just go in and you find games you want to play and you test how much lag they have. And then if you have means to play them on original hardware, you can find out, you know, how much lag you're dealing with. And then you can, you know, practice like I've shown you and you can train yourself. Um, and if you have a CRT and an emulator, you can try and feel what these higher uh, amounts of input lag feel like. And the question is that comes up is, well, how much lag is my emulator putting out? And that's why I got into being so sensitive to lag is I wanted to know how much lag the emulator was putting out. And I was getting ready to do a pad hack, which is where you take your controller and you hook up a light bulb to it and you record it just like I'm recording now. And then, um, you know, you press the button and as soon as the button's pressed, if there's a light bulb hooked up to it, the light bulb will light on the screen as soon as you press the button so you just you just press a bunch of buttons you know and the light bulb's going to go off you know and then you 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 record it and then you come over to vlc and you play back your recording and you will pause it pause your recording and then advance frames in the recording and you'll see like okay the light came on right here now advance frames and just count the frames it takes from that light bulb coming on so you can see your sprite move on the screen. And that's uh, the pad hack technique I was getting ready to do. And I found somebody that did exactly that and posted results. And he came to the same results as me. Like, so I was playing Battle Garega, Batrider, Dodonpachi. And I'm like, 
this game feels like it's got two frames of lag. This game feels like four. And then I saw his his um his results he did with the pad hack and he came to the same conclusions, which just reinforces that I'm what I'm doing and, and you know, my training to to be able to sense lag, it, it reinforces that it's correct that I, I am actually sensing lag. Um so let's go over to that website and I'll show you the guy's results that uh, did the pad hack. Okay, this is Mark's website and this is a page on it. Um, his website's The Electric Underground and he also has a YouTube titled the same and it's primarily for um, shmups, shoot 'em ups. And these are his results of his um, input lag testing he did and he did extensive testing. Um, and he's done it on multiple platforms here. So you can see his little, you know, his, um, what do you call this? His Excel, his spreadsheet here with the platform, the games, the input lag frames. And he did the pad hack technique like I just explained. And then consistency is about, you know, whether um, it was like uh, variable lag or not. And then he has whether he has V-Sync turned on or off. And on all of his examples, he's using a CRT, so there's no display lag added. And Nintendo Switch, and these are all shoot 'em ups, but I've played quite a few of these, so I've played three in particular. I've played that he's tested. So Shmup Arc, what he calls Shmup Arc is basically my same setup, where he uses a CRT and um, a Retro Arc emulator, FB Neo, just like I use, and he remo removes the input lag. Um, that's baked in the game just like I was showing you guys with run ahead so it's this the same setup as I use for input lag reasons and so we go into battle Garega um, right here three frames of lag that was the game we were just playing now I use vsync he has it turned off here so if you turn vsync on you're gonna get four frames of lag uh, armed police bat rider that game has four frames of lag baked into it as well so these games you can uh, just a side note here is you can play these games with the exact same lag that is that the the game has on the PCB if you use run ahead which is really cool. Dodon Pachi, see some of these games don't have 3 frames or 4 frames. Uh, Battle Garega and Batrider have have more lag. I noticed Dodon Pachi plays really good on FB Neo. And I don't use V-Sync with the most cave games. For some reason, the screen just doesn't seem to tear. So you can get down to two frames of lag on an emulator with these. All right, so why is all this important? Um, the big thing that's bothered me is that reviewers will cover games and they won't talk about exactly how much input lag a game has. They'll th say things like it has a little bit of lag or it has too much lag. And that just doesn't mean a whole lot to me. And I'm gonna play a couple clips here, for example. Bear in mind, these are reviewers that I love and respect and I watch their stuff all the time. Um, but I will be somewhat critical on their discussions of input lag. There are also some pacing issues and there is definitely some input lag you'll need to adjust to. It's enough to give an already bullish AI quite an advantage in later fights. The good news is, is so that was Sega Lord X reviewing the recent Astro City release. It's a, a mini uh, Astro City console. Um, here's another review by uh, ETA Prime here. App, and it's going to switch to cloud direct mode. So this controller is now actually connected over my Wi-Fi network to the server I'm going to be using with these games running Luna. And I did test this strictly over Bluetooth connected to the Amazon Fire Stick, but the input latency was really bad. And I was actually getting really frustrated with So he's talking about the Amazon Luna and he just says it's really bad. You know, what does that mean exactly? You know, it's not very helpful. Um, and I get it. it. Like I was showing, it's really hard to, to hook up a pad hack, hack your controller and set all the equipment up, run it and then record it and then test it on VLC. You know, it's just, it's a lot to ask a reviewer when they're reviewing a lot of products. Which is, you know, a big reason I'm making this video. Here's here's another one where the um this is GameSack talking about the Turbo Graphics Mini. And this one's interesting. Listen to this review. But is there any control lag? 
Yes, unfortunately there is. My friend Chris Tang tested this and found that it was between 3 to 5 frames behind real hardware hooked up to a CRT. I noticed myself dying quite a bit more on some games, and this is probably why. Again, a lot of these mini systems have this issue. Still, I was able to play most games decently well. So there, he, that's nice. He actually talks about a guy and then shows a web page where the guy actually referenced, or well, excuse me, GameSack referenced a guy that did a pad hack and did some objective measures on this. And, uh, you know, and he found three to five frames. The interesting thing to me is, you know, three to five frames isn't bad, guys. Like, he was showing Lords of Thunder, which I played through recently on my emulation setup, probably running three frames of lag, maybe four. Um, I had VSync turned on, so I was running at least three frames of lag, maybe four frames, and it was just fine. Um, I did not have a problem with it. So that's another thing, too. If, you know, if somebody tells you how many frames like GameSack did there, he can go ahead and give his opinion, you know, which I would appreciate for him to do. And then I can make up my own mind if that's too much lag or not. Like, we all have... A different standard for for input lag what bothers us um, so if people would use this technique that I'm talking about you don't have to hook up your your pad hack all the time to do a review you, you know you spend an hour or two showing yourself like and a lot of people have this equipment you know you people we got original hardware we got emulators so just you know bounce around from emulator to your original hardware find out how much lag a game has baked into it then try to play it on original hardware you know look up mark's website and try the games that he's shown on there and see if you have any of them in emulation and you can see what these higher um frames of lag feel like and then if you're a reviewer you know i, w I really wish reviewers would do this and and actually throw a number out there and then just for you know guys like me and you that you know that are um just wanting to play games it helps me out when i know how much lag a game has if it's got over five frames, six frames of lag, like I hear on some of these PS4 Psycho games, and I just, I'm not going to play them on there. I'll find another way to play them when you get up into that five and six input lag, you know, number. Um, let's see. And then also it'll kind of change how you play the game. If the game's got a lot of lag in it, you know, and you're playing like a shooter, for example, you might want to, you know, not try to micro dodge all the time and really like route out the game, you know, because you just don't have the time if you're playing four frames of lag. And, you know, I say that, but I mean, you, you still get four frames of lag. I still get by on playing games like Batrider and Battle Garega. Um, it's just another tool in your arsenal and it's something important to me. And uh, yeah, get out there and, uh, and uh, play some games, guys. Alright guys, this is Street Fighter 2.